unexpected period. Interestingly, now Sentosa is celebrating its golden jubilee and they are kicking off 50 new experiences for singaporeans for tourists a good news story here on our little red dot and to join us to talk about it uh Chen Kui Eng, who is the ceo of sentosa development corporation Kui Eng, great to see you again hello hello hi glenn hi neil welcome uh, welcome to the show and Wow, you know, in in a time when we're constantly facing challenges with economy and COVID and everything, Sentosa just seems to put a smile on everybody's face. <laughs> That's a good job yeah, you have I there. So too, I mean, uh, greetings from the sunny island. <laughs> because you were discussing something so serious. Just it, yeah, <laughs> everybody but, needs a break. <laughs> but on, a, on, you know, seriously though, uh, Kui Eng, the way that Sentosa has navigated the pandemic and adapted and been. Res- resourceful and you know kept kept the place island kept the island moving kept the staff employed kept the visitors coming it is a testament to sentosa's adaptability the way you have navigated throughout this pandemic seriously well thank you um i think it's it's really a lot of hard work and um and and it's not just uh, sdc right because the island comprises uh, many of our partners so actually it's a it's a very kampong spirit that we have here working together as one um, and really to put in place the necessary protocols and processes uh, on safe management measures so that we can welcome guests very safely uh, to enjoy the island um, and at the same time um, continuously roll out, rolling out um, very exciting uh, experiences, uh, new new experiences for guests to come to enjoy. So, yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say what what we I definitely want to talk about the Golden Jubilee and some of the new things you're doing. But as yeah. a uh, from a broad perspective, Sentosa Corporation obviously oversees the island. How how much of a challenge is that? You have so many partners there, everything from golf and hotels to resorts <laughs> world, obviously, and uh, and you know there, there's so much going on there. It must be a, a real constant um, effort to sort of keep everybody aligned and to keep the island moving in, in a direction that you feel is the right direction forward. How, how, does, that, how does that look from a managerial perspective? Uh, yeah, I, I think as uh, Sentosa Development Corporation, I think we had many roles uh, in, in the way we deliver our, our work. Um, obviously, we are a landlord, um, but more importantly, I think we are uh, a placemaker, we are a promoter, we are a marketeer. Uh, and, uh, and and how do we actually aggregate uh, the best of, of the island uh, to our guests? And that mm. requires uh, working together in tandem with all our uh, tenants. Um, we call them island partners, uh, in short, IPs. Um, that involves a lot of uh, engagement, but also setting a, a vision to align everybody uh, in, in how we should uh, be moving in the same direction. So there's no shortcut uh, except, uh, you know, really engagement on the ground. And uh, we are so happy to have uh, all our island partners who actually sees the alignment in our vision to be the world's best loved uh, leisure and lifestyle destination. And, and they all play a big part in uh, delivering that experience. Fantastic. And let's talk a bit about Sentosa now, Kui Eng, because, yeah. you know, I've written about it many times in my books. I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm wow. fascinated okay. by the history. And the, I mean, Sentosa, the island itself, my late uncle was stationed there after World War II. You know, as such tremendous history. Everybody knows it was called Pulau Blakang Mati, you know, island behind the dead. It has such a wonderful, mysterious history going back to the days of Singapore and regional piracy. And then 1972 comes along and Sentosa is born. And as I understand it, Kuyang, it nearly didn't happen, right? It, it, it could have been part of the oil industry or something. Tell us that story because it's fascinating. Yeah, actually, I think few people know this fact that uh, um, if history had taken a different turn, we would have been uh, celebrating our anniversary as an oil refinery. Um, <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank <laughs> goodness that didn't happen. Huh? The oil refinery is not important, all right? So I, I think uh, in the 50s and 60s, I think, um, of course, the, the main trust of the government is economic development. And, and we have to thank uh, the then uh, Isa Dutch economic advisor, Dr. Albert uh, Winsemest, um, yeah. who was uh, an advisor to the Singapore government and, of course, to uh, Prime Minister, the then 
Prime Minister uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Um, and he made a proposal, instead of turning it to be an oil refinery, I think they have the foresight together with our leaders that eventually, uh, from that time, uh, 50 years ago, that Singapore, this tiny island, will become a global city. And that's the only way to success and survival. And if we achieve that, we need a place for Singaporeans to relax and to recharge. And what better than to safeguard an island um, for that purpose? And so that's why the decision was made with the advice of uh, Dr. Win Simas, um, together with the head of uh, URA then, uh, Mr. Alan Cho, um, and who subsequently became uh, SDC's chairman and to preserve the island. So actually, you know, um, I'm, I'm glad that with the foresight of all uh, our forefathers and our previous uh, leaders, yeah. It's interesting because uh, Mr. Winsimus is is actually uh, forgotten by a lot of people, but he was yeah. so instrumental in bringing Shell here and bringing Phillips here. Exactly. He was he was Dutch, um, and Lee Kuan Yew uh, spoke or at least sent tribute at his funeral uh, when Winsimus died. There's a road in Singapore named mm -hmm. after him, a so small yeah. one. But this guy was so instrumental, and and I didn't know his connection to the Sentosa. Yeah. So thanks That's for mentioning right. <laughs> uh, mentioning that. Well, uh, take us up to now modern day. Um, you know, in ever since Resorts World came up, uh, what, 12, 10, 12 years ago now, the, the island has really had a, a very much a, a new identity around it. Uh, and, of course, we have the housing there. We have, uh, you know, all this sort of things. Where, where are we at now with Sentosa? What is the current thinking about its, its use and, and what you're doing now, with, especially with the Jubilee? Yeah, I, I think Golden the, Jubilee. The Jubilee, Golden Jubilee is a huge uh, milestone uh, because I think it's important to commemorate uh, our transformation um, from a sleeping fishing village uh, and a former military base to one of the world's leading uh, lifestyle and uh, leisure destinations. Um, and we host uh, 19 million visitors internationally as well as local every year. Um, that was pre-COVID and, and of course we hope to do so when the situation uh, recovers. And um, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we, we try to, to really look um, uh, ahead and see how we can um, deliver uh, the best for, for, for Singaporeans and, and all. Um, and that constantly requires a mindset to, to really look ahead. Um, and uh, if you look at how we have uh, been focused on rolling out uh, new commemorative uh, experiences um, in the Jubilee, actually, um, as part of Jubilee, we want to celebrate also the different facets of the island. Um, mm. And, uh, you, you know, I, I think most people would know uh, Resorts World, uh, Universal Studio, right? They would know Sentosa Golf Club uh, and uh, Cove as what you highlighted. But perhaps uh, it's also to celebrate uh, the natural environment that we have on the island, um, the lush greenery, the heritage trees, the history, uh, the conserved buildings uh, of the island. So as part of the, the Jubilee, actually we're rolling out 50 new uh, commemorative experiences, um, one of which I just wanted to share is a Sento site. Um, we actually did that in partnership with uh, Singapore Tourism Board as well as the travel uh, trade industry. Uh, essentially, what we did was to do a grant call uh, to say, hey, uh, could someone please help us tell better stories about Sentosa, mm -hmm. you know, and the lesser known facts. And this is really uh, more than 10 guided tours, which will cover uh, Tanjong Rimau, uh, you know, mm -hmm. some of the Fort Siloso, Fort Serapong, um, and the lesser known gems that we have on the island. Um, it's have, those, have those tours yeah. uh, started yet, Kuyang, or will they start Sorry? soon? Uh, have those yeah, tours begun? It will be launched uh, uh, in tandem with the year. Uh, some have been launched, so we will be rolling out across the year uh, uh, as we move ahead. So about four or five of them have been launched. So please nice. uh, uh, hope, hope that uh, you could join us. Yeah, Kuyang, I could not agree more. And as I said, I've written about this extensively in the past. What I like most about Sentosa, yes, you have to adapt. Yes, you have to stay relevant. And yes, the island must make some money for the country. We know all of that. But it's that delicate balancing act, isn't it? And Mike Ung, one of our listeners, has already said, please keep Singapore uh, Sentosa as green as possible. It's that balancing act between 
tourism attractions, of course, but also you've got that lush rainforest there. You've got the nature trails there. You've got the history, as you mentioned, Fort Soloso has just been gazetted, which is fantastic news. Fort <laughs> Serapong, you've still got the machine gun uh, pillboxes, I believe, along the Soloso <laughs> Beach. Mm -hmm. yeah, this yeah. kind of heritage, this kind of history, and this kind of greenery is so integral, isn't it, to Sentosa's yeah. future? Exactly. I mean, um, that's why we have also, um, you know, looked at how we preserved and built upon uh, what we have uh, and the value proposition that we have in order to um, make sure that the generations ahead of us uh, can enjoy that. And uh, precisely why we launched a sustainable Sentosa, right? It's uh, really an initiative to make sure that uh, we keep, keep uh, our course, keep to our course, um, and all these things that are important and integral to our survival and our value propositions, we continue to stay true to them. Yeah. yeah. So I think if you look at the island, uh, even uh, maybe few people know uh, the unofficial ambassadors uh, of the island is the peacocks and peafowls. Mm, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a good uh, little uh, aspect to to remind people we have to coexist with the environment. Um, yeah. and, and, and the flora and the fauna around us. Uh, and and uh, we're glad that since 1980 from two, it's grown to 60. Uh, and wow. they're free roaming. Mm. Yeah. Great, great, <laughs> Say yeah. hello to them. And your car Indeed. has to stop when you encounter them on the island. <laughs> as, as they should. We're talking with Etienne Quiang, the CEO of Santosa Development Corp. Uh, a couple of other uh, Facebook Live friends have commented. Pinchia says one of her favorite attractions is the Wax Museum uh, at the top of Imbia Lookout. Uh, LL Tan says, not much nature left in Sentosa. Please let it grow free and preserve the historical heritage, uh, etc. And that that really is a you know a, a concern for a lot of people, right? Yeah, yeah. We do see the we do see the development, um, and you know people do want to see that green space as well. Um, from from your vision of of what it looks like, I hear what you're saying about sustainability and and building. What do you think that future looks like in terms of green Sentosa? Where where will we be in five ten years time? Will there be a lot more development, or will there be a, an effort to save the green space that's currently there? And just to add to that, Kui, and I believe you're going to extend, aren't you, into Palau Brani, right? At some yeah. point, it's just that's to add right. to that, that's yeah. Right. Um, Brani right now is, is a port, as you are aware, and sure. uh, we've unveiled the Sentosa Brani Master Plan in 2019. So um, some of these high energy uh, related attractions, I think we will have to look at uh, how we can, you know, look at Brani as, as that uh, platform um, yeah. for, for international visitors. But uh, the planning guideline is really how we look at decompression from the mainland to Brani into Sentosa Island. So and 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 we've also built a, a gateway to uh, southern islands uh, through a cove a jetty. So mm -hmm. the the planning guideline is really looking at decompression, and so um, we hope to really uh, stay true and preserve about seventy percent of Sentosa Island uh, in terms of greenery uh, spaces uh, for guests to enjoy. So today. Um, there is uh, Imbia trails, uh, coastal trails, and some of the uh, forts, uh, which is really lush uh, with greenery and, and wildlife for people to enjoy. So I think that's a commitment uh, by me and uh, the island partners. Yeah. And speaking of the island partners, Kuiang, I think I read recently that there's a commitment to sustainably, I use that word carefully, sustainably open up more of the neighboring islands of Sentosa, right, to visit. I, I read there's a, a cycling kiosk. I think it was at yeah. St. John's Island. Does that come That's under right. the SDC? Yeah, I mean, these are yeah. wonderful initiatives I think people need to know more about. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so I think it's to really extend the Sentosa getaway um, to our nearby island uh, for guests to really uh, recharge, uh, repost, Rejuvenate, I think that is so important uh, during times like that. So uh, we've started a jetty uh, service uh, from Sentosa Cove. Um, it works on Fridays, Saturdays, and, and Sundays, so you just go online to book. Hmm. Um, you can bring your bicycles. You can bring your dogs yeah. Uh, over. Yeah, wow. And uh, the intention is really to keep uh, southern islands where, uh, you know, a cluster of islands, St. John, uh, Lazarus, Seringard, um, rustic. So there is no, you know, uh, heavy programming, uh, but offering uh, bike services. And we will be introducing uh, low-carbon uh, accommodation, off-grid accommodation, uh, novel concepts on uh, the island uh, for guests Brilliant. to enjoy. Uh, stay tuned. Mm. 
Fantastic. Uh, Kuyang, uh, one of our regular uh, Facebook Live viewers, Rob Salisbury, says, thanks for the wide and safe bike lanes across the bridge uh, to the left and all the way to Sentosa Cove and back to Siloso Beach. Makes for a great ride without too much worry about the cars and buses. And I have to agree, having ridden out there with Rob and on my own, uh, having those safe lanes yeah. for biking is just, it, it's fantastic. Uh, a quick question to you about Palawan Beach. So my family and I were out there last week, uh, played a little volleyball on the beach and hang out with our kids. Uh, but a, a large swath of it is still hoarded off and closed. What's the plan for that to come back? And are, are all the safe distancing measures still in effect? Or is that going to start to loosen up as we live with the endemic, uh, you know, et, et cetera? What, what are the plans for Palawan and our uh, used to have to book the beach and all that? Yeah, so we have three golden beaches on, on Sentosa, so Palawan is one of them uh, in the middle, um, yeah. closest to the beach station. I think that is really uh, geared towards a family, um, and that whole uh, stretch, actually, we, we have a, a new tenant uh, who's coming on board to program a family-themed uh, ex new experiences, uh, and uh, we hope that they will be unveiled uh, sometime next year. Yeah, mm. so, so you will see the entire Palawan, um, we call it village, uh, transform. It's a working title. Yeah, we hope that that could really become a, a, a kind of little kampong hmm. and village uh, for people to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and are the safe distancing things, measures? Yeah. yeah. What about those? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, it's, it's it's real challenge. So last year when we we uh, two years back already, uh, you know, I've got. Uh, you know, we had to institute some of the beach booking system so that uh, right. we are responsible and, and we have guests back on the island to enjoy the beaches. Um, right now, uh, we will uh, look at uh, some of the national guidelines and, and, and adjust accordingly in tandem with, with how the, the Singapore is, is uh, relaxing um, in its measures. But we are experimenting with uh, certain parts of the beaches. I think near next to uh, Palawan Green, um, there's a small part in which we are trying to open up uh, without uh, the barricades um, and, and really try and learn uh, consumer behavior, our guest behavior on the ground, uh, and, and how do we do that uh, in an in a environment where we are asked to open. Right? So, so we still need to, to take care of different considerations. But yes, yeah. um, that's what I hope to. <laughs> Sounds yeah, like the perfect destination for us to do a live radio show from. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> live radio show. Okay, very briefly, Queen, yeah. finally. You know, when I talk to some Singaporeans, they say, oh, Sentoso, I've been there so many times. Oh. What is one What is one hidden gem or one attraction that you would like to point out for our listeners and viewers who may not have been there or may not have known that it's been renovated and changed? Oh, um, th there are a couple of uh, new, uh, as I said, we are rolling out 50 new commemorative uh, leisure experiences. So Sento sites uh, is essentially to celebrate uh, the biodiversity and uh, you know, of the island. So I would say, uh, take a look at some of the tours, uh, the ones in uh, to Tanjong Rimau, um, which is one of the last remaining uh, coastal cliffs and rocky shores uh, in Singapore. Um, it's a very rich, uh, you know, um, home to corals, seagrasses and uh, marine life. So you can get up close and personal without your diving gear. <laughs> Nice. And um, <laughs> in terms of dining, um, we've got a new offering, uh, uh, Interim Market at Southside. is just next to uh, Fort Siloso. Um, artisanal ice creams, uh, delicious burgers. Um, so please uh, take a look. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Chen Kuiang, CEO of Sentosa Development Corp., thank you so much for being with us. Congratulations on Sentosa's Golden Jubilee. Of course, people can get online and check out uh, all the great things happening this year. I wish you good luck and hope you'll come back on the show as you have uh, new initiatives uh, around the island. We'd love to hear more about it. Thank you so much.